What is going on guys, Joan and Joe back with the Max Platinum Rank 1 deck for February 2022. If anyone isn't aware by now, I am using two accounts, one on PS5 and the other on PC, to maximize my options while being free to play. For January, on this PS5 account I hit Plat 1 with Cyber Dragons on release, and last month I decided to go with Sky Strikers, a unique deck that I usually wonder if I know what I'm doing with. Before I get onto the deck, as a reminder, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, and keep coming back for more and also considering following on Twitch for Yu-Gi-Oh! streams on Tuesdays. Now onto the deck. Sky Strikers are a pretty fun link control deck mostly that revolve heavily around using spell effects while not controlling a monster in the main monster zone. There are only two main deck monsters and a lot of the spells have secondary effects when you have three or more spell cards in the grave, maximizing your need for extra tech cards. Since there are only two main deck monsters, hand traps are heavily preferred in this deck however you can manage. My personal choices aside from the staple maxis and Ash Blossom are Effect Veiler and Nibiru. Effect Veiler may only fit in certain decks, but for some linked decks this card can create an easy route to access code with Halka Fibrax into Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians. A core disruption for Sky Striker boards is two of their quick play spells, Widow Anchor and Shark Cannon which can steal a monster from the field or grave respectively. Doing this can give you easy opportunities for this OTK with access code or just flat out disruption. The goal for this deck is to maximize your spells in the grave while controlling your opponent with hand traps, widow anchor, and shark cannon until you have a clear path to lethal. All of the Sky Striker links are link 1 except Zeke and can help you poke for damage or search for needed cards while you stall your opponent into lethal range. Multi Row is one of the best cards for maintaining your control as it can reset any Sky Striker spells from the grave at the end phase depending on the number of spells you activated in that turn. Realistically, you need at least two turns of poking with Hayate to deal 3000 damage, putting your opponent into a state where access code can win you the duel. Alternatively, there may be other paths such as using Zeke to banish an opponent's monster, reviving Rose, and then sending the field spell to the grave which can get you 5500 points of damage. Stealing opposing monsters with Widow Anchor can also help as you can attack with that monster and then use it as a material or send it away with the field spell or multi-row if your opponent has a next turn to use it again. Now this deck has some really good cards so it is the victim of quite a few banlist hits, making the deck really affordable for the most part. Gagari is limited to 1 but is at 3 in the TCG currently so if you get extra copies and love this deck, I'd consider waiting on this man with them. The search spell engage however will probably never see 3 copies as it is an amazing consistency card that can search a spell and draw an additional card if you have 3 spells in the grave. Getting this card out of the deck should always be a priority as its value is too good. Afterburners and jamming waves are fine at 1 each, and lightning storm is not a heavy priority, I was just filling the space. While desires may seem dangerous in this deck, it has worked well for me at 2 copies to get those cards you need, even in the TCG with 1 engage. Now my most unique tech in this deck is the field spell Cyanet Universe. This is probably a personal preference thing, but the main thing this slot should be is a way to get Kagari back into the extra deck. More common methods are Pot of Avarice and the Sky Striker spell Hercules base. Any of those work, but Sign and Universe I personally enjoy as a way to disrupt your opponent sometimes, as I'm sure viewers on my Twitch channel have seen. I've also used Twin Twisters to pop this at one point to bait out negates, since it sends monsters in the extra monster zone to the grave without targeting. If you cut this for Avarice or Hercules base, you could probably do without terraforming as well, if you have other ideas. Some other cards that can work in this deck are Metal Foes Fusion with two copies of Foolish Burial Goods, as well as Imperial Iron War or There Can Be Only One, Continuous Trap Cards. Infinite Impermanence is also another amazing hand trap to consider if you can afford it. For the extra deck, I would say Axis Code Talker is mandatory along with the Sky Striker ratios you see. Nightmare Phoenix rarely came up but can stop any disgusting Imperial Orders if possible, along with Ningirsu, a free Link 3 you can get from Solo Mode. Also is another route into Selene since Maxi is so popular, but any Charmer Link is viable if you can revive the correct attribute. Since I brought up Imperial Order, if you face back row going second and have Twin Twisters, please do not shotgun it as this deck auto loses to Order 75% of the time. You can fight, but losing access to 25 cards in your deck because you didn't wait to chain Twisters is heartbreaking. Now I did begin to feel more comfortable going second with the deck after a while thanks to Max C being available along with other hand traps. Ideally one or two hand traps can discourage your opponent enough to fail in making a crazy board, enabling you to get right to poking with Hayate and setting up your searches. Going first, your only link play is going to be Shizuku, unless you can abuse a gauge, but with all the back row move I've been seeing, you risk losing your spells right on turn 2. In this replay, we are up against one of the strongest tri brigade boards possible, and sadly we didn't get any decent hand traps since Appaloosa hits the field on the 5th summon. Still, the biggest nightmare here is the Trap Revolt since it gives them an easy banish and adds a card to the hand. By some miracle though, we have everything we need. 
Duster forces the revolt early while Nibiru does still trigger yet again for 5 summons, dropping Appaloosa into kill range. For the icing on top, Call by the Grave stops Nerval from searching, and Afterburners can get rid of Dragon Lords. Now like I mentioned, Sky Strikers are not an OTK deck right on the first turn, so what this duel pretty much shows is how to obtain the lead on advantage from your opponent. With Engage, we can search Widow Anchor to disrupt any more Tri Summons, and Shark Cannon can banish the Grave to minimize their materials. Most opponents realize they can't come back and scoop before you even have to deal 8000 points of damage. This is a really unique deck to master, and I don't think I am the best with it, but I still enjoy oppressing opponents with one monster and a bunch of spells. In the future, there is support for Sky Strikers coming, so depending on how Master Duel does things, you could be seeing quicker OTKs with the spell car linkage, and the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer engine, which might not be too far away. That's gonna be it for me. Enjoy the replays despite how slow Strikers can play, and stay tuned for my other Platinum 1 deck for February, Ignistas.